Thank you for joining us, Friendship Christian Church, Friendship Ministries YouTube channel. Today we're in Matthew chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. The title of the message is, A Journey of a Lifetime. Just imagine taking a journey of a lifetime. This one journey is still talked about over many, many, many lifetimes. Before we get into our message, I do want to let you know that after our message, we'll have a time of prayer, and then we'll take communion. We'll take up the Lord's Supper. So please get something to eat, something to drink, and don't worry about if it's not uh, fruit, if it's not unleavened bread, or if it's not uh, wine or what have you, even fruit of the vine. Don't worry about it. God will take care of it. And now, before we get into our message, let us have a word of prayer. Father, we just pray that as you search our minds and our hearts, that you meet all those needs that are listed there. And Father, we pray for those that are on our prayer list, that you give them peace, comfort, and healing to where it's needed. And Father, we pray for those that are still trapped in Afghanistan, those who are still being shelled in Ukraine, those who are first responders, those who are health care workers, those who are in the mission field, and those serving this nation. Father, we just pray that you put a hedge of protection around them all. Keep them free from harm, from evil and disease. And Father, we pray that you be with Friendship Christian Church that you allow it to shine with the light of the truth of Jesus Christ in this community. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. The journey of a lifetime. Matthew chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east, came to Jerusalem. Now the Magi, some people think they're three kings. The Magi may or may not be kings. Most likely not. These were very learned men. They were skilled in knowledge and wisdom of mathematics, chemistry, uh, different forms of science, astronomy, and they would have been wise men, advisors to a king. Uh, we believe it might have been the king of Babylon. And we know that it's during the time of King Herod. So the king of Babylon was told by these wise men that uh, they were to go and follow this star. This star from the east came to Jerusalem. They were in the east when they saw the star. That's why it's from the east. Of course, the star would have led them westward from Babylon to Jerusalem. And they had this strange appearance in the sky as uh, learned men as watchers of uh, nature and the heavens. It, it piqued their interest. And there's something else that's at play here. In 586 B.C., the people from Jerusalem were taken captive by Babylon, by Nebuchadnezzar. And they were exiled into Babylon, and they stayed there for 70 years. Two prophets made that trip to Babylon, Jeremiah and Daniel. And with them, they had scrolls, scrolls that were written by Micah, Hosea, Isaiah. And we know Daniel ended up also working in the king's court. He would have been 
with these, not these particular wise men, but with wise men in the court. And his knowledge of these scriptures and scrolls would have been handed down to those Babylonian wise men. Uh, Isaiah, Hosea, Micah, they were all written 705 to 700 B.C. The captivity took place in 586 B.C. The birth takes place in 4 B.C. So these wise men were the recipients of all of the knowledge of the past. And so when this star appeared, they went back through their notes and went back through the scrolls and came to the king and said, we need to go. We need to go. And the king, we, we always talk about three kings, and we just see them by themselves. The king wanted these men back. He made sure they were okay. He also wanted to make an impression on this new king who's going to take over for Herod. So he sends a caravan. Many camels, full of gifts and presents. He also had a caravan of provisions so that his wise men and their entourage would not be without food and water and supplies and shelter and clothing. He also would have supplied servants for these guys in order to pack and unpack these animals and lead the way and take care of anything they needed taken care of. And they also would have had soldiers with them to protect them from attack. So that's what's leaving Babylon, headed to Jerusalem. And then in verse 2, they, uh, they come. And they and asked, Where is the one who's been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Now in Numbers chapter 24, verse 17, written about 1400 B.C., it talks about this star. They knew this information because of the exile that happened in 586 B.C. So they get there. They get to Jerusalem. And they ask around, where is this king? And they follow the star. Now, you've got this entourage coming into Jerusalem. There are Roman soldiers there and a Roman governor there. They're going to know something is not right. And they're going to send their officers to these guys and find out why they're there, where they came from, and how long they're staying. At the same time, the high priest is taking notice in the temple. He wants to know the same thing. And King Herod, with his administrative people, he wants to know what's going on. And they're explaining to them if... We're here in Jerusalem. If you can finish pointing the way, tell us what street this Jewish king is. We want to go see him. Well, that didn't sit well with King Herod. Take a look at verse 3. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed in all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, where the Christ is to be born. In Bethlehem and Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. Now, what I'm going to read here from Scripture, God's Word, was written by the prophet Micah about 700 B.C., and you'll find it in Micah chapter 5, verse 2. It is written, but you, Bethlehem, the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be shepherd of my people Israel. Bethlehem, just a few miles outside of Jerusalem, was just a spot in the road. A tiny, tiny little village. But Micah, 700 B.C., knew it's there that the Messiah is going to be born. King Herod is a Jew. He's the king of the Jews. He was put in place by Caesar Augustus. Why does he not know the scripture? These pagan wise men from Babylon know the scripture. Why doesn't the king of the Jews in Jerusalem know the scripture? Same reason. Many people call themselves Christians 
and don't know the scripture. They don't pray. They don't study. They don't read. And you're going to miss out on some blessings if you don't. I'm imploring you. Read that Bible. Get in the Word. Get into prayer. Let the Holy Spirit give you understanding so that you know what's going on in this world. King Herod had no clue. And we have a lot of things going on in this world, and most Christians don't have a clue. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go worship him. King Herod did not want to worship this child. He wanted to kill it. He didn't want a different king coming into Jerusalem. It's his palace and his offspring are going to be kings. After they had heard the king, they went their way. And the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. The star they saw while they were in the east. And it stopped over where the child was. It led them directly to Jesus. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed on coming to the house. He was no longer in a stable. He was no longer in a wooden structure. He was no longer in a cave. He was in a house, probably a house of a relative, when they came. But notice this. They were overjoyed, overjoyed because of the birth of Jesus. It's Christmas time. It's Christmas season. Are people overjoyed over the birth of Jesus Christ? Are they celebrating? Are they worshiping the greatest event of all time, the birth of Jesus Christ? Or are people too busy? They're doing their shopping. They're doing their working. They're doing everything but worshiping and being glad that Jesus came into this world. Some people don't want Jesus around just like King Herod didn't because they want to live the way they want to live. That's got to stop, especially for Christians. Jesus is real. You've got to get real about Jesus. Get real. Worship Jesus. Read about Jesus. Pray to Jesus. Learn about Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. Because that's the only salvation you have. That's all there is for you. Don't let this holiday go by that you don't worship Jesus. So to go on with the verses, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down, and they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold. Gold is something you give to a human king. So they recognized Jesus was fully human. Evan, and of incense. Incense is that which you burn in the temple. Gives off a, a fragrant aroma and lifts a smoke up to the sky. That's a gift you give to a divine king. Jesus is fully God. And myrrh, it's, it's spelled M-Y-R-R-H if you want to look it up. It's a burial ointment. A burial ointment keeps the body fresher for a little while for viewing. A burial ointment. So he's fully human. He gets gold. He's fully God. He gets incense. He's come. God has come to die for your sins. He's given myrrh. In 30 years time, he's going to end up on the cross. He's going to die for your sins. He's going to be in the tomb for three days, but he's going to rise up. He's going to resurrect. He's alive today. He's alive forever. He died for your sins so you can be alive forever. So that you can ascend into heaven into a very place he made for you in heaven. How do you get there? You have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's what you got to do. Worship him. So then in verse 12, 
And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. How many people do not want Jesus to exist? Do not want Jesus to be God in the flesh? Do want Jesus to be dead and buried forever? Everybody that wants to validate their own sinful lifestyle and doesn't want to change. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. That prophet was Hosea, who wrote about 700 years B.C. You'll find it in chapter 11, verse 1. It's true, folks. It's true. It's true. When Herod realized that he'd been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious. He gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they were no more. The Magi eventually returned home. They were changed forever. They brought the knowledge of Jesus into the pagan society of Babylon. This Christmas could make for you an end to all your searching could be the beginning of a new life, an eternal life in Jesus. All you have to do is ask him. He will respond. Give your life to him. Do that today. If you need help, if you have questions, call me, 502-220-1285. I will be more than happy to help you with that. Now let us close with the word of prayer, but I do, I do encourage you to stay for the Lord's Supper. Uh, let us pray. Father, we just pray that during this season we can contemplate and meditate on Jesus. We can use this time to share Jesus with those who don't know about him. Father, we can give us the will, the strength, and the faith to be a worthy servant during this time. During this time that we can worship. We can be joyful. And we can share. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for sticking around as we go into the Lord's Supper. As I said, don't worry about what elements you have. Just get you something to eat, something to drink. God will take care of the rest of it. I have me here a piece of bread. Jesus took bread and broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body. This symbolizes the body that was given on the cross. For Jesus died. He was dead when he came off of that cross, when he was laid in the tomb. He died. But he died for your sins. He knew your name. He knew the date of your birth. He knew the date of your death. He knew all the sins you committed. And still, he died for them. Take this bread in remembrance of what Jesus did for you. Let us pray. Father, we pray you take this element that you transconfigure it to be the substance it should be. And Father, we just ask your blessings on this bread in Jesus' name. Amen. And then Jesus took a cup, 
we have just a simple cup here. Took a cup and said, this is my blood of the new covenant. Drink this in remembrance of me. A new covenant. When he died on that cross, he gave all of his blood. No longer do we have to do animal sacrifices. Jesus was the sacrifice. He did it one time. He did it for all time. He did it for everyone. It's all in the blood. And this blood allows you to go into heaven and claim the place he prepared for you. You have eternal life by the blood of Christ on that cross. Let us pray. Father, we pray that you take the contents of this cup, that you transconfigure it to be the substance it should be. Father, we ask your blessings on this cup in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, and may we all go in peace.